I gotta practice. <laughs> okay, welcome back to another episode of Tissa Violin. I know on this channel we've often joked about stop playing Canon D. Ah! So cliche. Look, don't get me wrong, if Canon D you love that piece, don't let us stop you from having yeah, it on so a special day. You can stop lying to yourself. That's fine. Right. I'm just joking. We're going to give a list of 10 pieces that aren't usually played at weddings, but we think might be pretty cool just to get you to think about and listen to them. It's not fact proven, but divorce rates will go down. I'm just joking. Ideally, the music has some personal meaning to it. If you and your partner have shared memories to a particular piece and it means something to you, then don't let us be the ones to stop you and say, hey, that's not... Of course. Me. Because it's your special day, right? You want to play Rush E? All good. Go yeah, if it. you guys yeah. met listening to Rush E, and Rush E makes you think about your first kiss, <laughs> Go for then it. play Rush E. Yeah. Okay, here's a list that we came up with. First one is uh, Debussy. Oh, of course, Debussy. Right? Mm -hmm. Debussy Arabesque. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, oh, it's so elegant. It's just so calming and just... It's just so beautiful and dreamy and serene. It's like you're in a dream and it's like your dream fantasy come true. It's obviously written for piano. But I also think the harp arrangement of this is really nice. Some people like that, like DJ rave weddings. Mm -hmm. But usually a wedding for me, there should be a certain level of elegance to it. I think it should be romantic and expressive, right? Something that's beautiful. Yes. Because mm. it's a beautiful moment. Mm. Shouldn't be too dissonant like mm -hmm. Shostakovich or, you know, like Stravinsky. Oh, you yeah, play Firebird. 100% <laughs> recommended. 100% like, recommended. Like, <laughs> contemporary dance. Yeah, yeah. Second one. This one is a little tricky because in my mind, this piece is so beautiful and it just speaks love. Like the most intense love you might have for someone but it can at times err on the sad melancholic side so it depends what vibe you want to go for if i was walking down and i heard that i might just start crying it is pretty deep this, yeah. this piece but like uh, crying mm -hmm. because of like how happy i am but yeah that's what i start crying it's a little bit sentimental too it's, it's got that revise like everything's coming together and it sounds fuller as well the harmonies in there yeah but isn't it just the most beautiful piece? it's beautiful guys if you've never heard this piece, Tchaikovsky wrote this for a reason. That guy knew how to compose music. Next on our list is list. Ah, <laughs> Let, let's just listen. Wow. Why are you guys all playing Packer Bells and Cannon? What's going on? Like... <laughs> Did you know Liebestrom apparently means dream of love and it's actually based on a poem mm -hmm. and this poem is about unconditional love and is that not so fitting for the theme of a wedding? Like, I choose to love you unconditionally. The list gave you a piece so divorce won't happen. And you're playing Cannon. And you're planning Cannon and divorce. <laughs> Something a bit more grandeur now, because it is also a celebration. There's something about good Baroque music, good Bach music, the way the music is written is just so much dignity to it. Yeah, poise, dignity, it's so structured, it's like, this is mm. how it is. There's a beauty in its, in some ways it's restraint, but also it's kind of spirituality. No way. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it anyway. I think it's a nice contrast. So rather than everything being like too soppy and emotional. Yes. You know, something that's like... Well, everyone needs a bit of, you know, rules and stuff in their marriage. A bit of structure. So things don't fall apart. That's why we have Bach. Otherwise, all of you are going to be like, Woo, honeymoon! Bach gives you structure. Number five. Something slow and romantic. Very Brahms. If you mm. know about Brahms' history with Clara Schumann. <laughs> Hopefully people don't think about <coughs> Brahms and Clara's romance. At the same time, I think the emotions conveyed in this piece is very beautiful and intense. I mean, Brahms did love Clara. He wrote this for Clara to confess his secret love. It's just, Clara's taken Brahms, you need to chill. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is the music is 
beautiful. Speaking of Clara Schumann, <laughs> the next one is written by Schumann himself, so Clara's husband. Why? Why are we playing Packet Bell's Cannon? People just don't know. Please share this video! <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. This piece is called Liebeslied. This is actually Liszt's transcription of it, arrangement. And the song cycle was originally composed by Schumann as a wedding gift to Clara. I'll tell you what I love musically about it is there's such a beautiful simplicity to it. I was about to say, this, the notes are repeat, but it works really well. Mm. Dun, dun. And then obviously he starts adding in all the nice little harmonies, but they're not ever too out there, but it just adds a little bit of expression to it. This whole song is actually composed in a wedding context, a wedding gift, and the poem itself that it's based on is just a celebration of love. It was written for this. Yeah, so I don't know why you guys are still playing Packet of Those Cancer. It's just... <laughs> Another one from Bach, Brandenburg Concerto number six. Ooh, yeah, so everyone plays, what, number three? To me, number three is over. It just sounds a bit like a study. <laughs> but number six, it's got that classy elegance, it's got the poise, again, Bach, structure, grandeur, spirituality. There's a bit of joy in it too, in his own way. It's not like, wah! It's just yeah. there. I like the dissonances, the suspenses. Yes. It just keeps it from being too musically boring, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Another Bach actually, and we recently played this. The second movement to Bach double is actually very beautiful. Oh, the dissonances of that. Yeah. yeah. Bach really. Oh. When you listen to oh. it. Oh. I mean, yeah. Oh. When you. Oh. We had lessons on this before we performed it with Singapore Symphony. And Bach was very religious, man. And our teacher was talking about the type of mood we wanted. You know, it's a key of F major. And F major is a very pastoral, it's a very nature kind of key sound and in a way it's kind of like a very spiritual like our position in the world in relation to nature yes. it's almost but, like your addict's acceptance of that mm, like, ah. there's something beautiful in that for me like we picturing the couple in the context of the world if that makes sense mm -hmm. it's i, I want to show you guys the yeah. bit we're talking about this bit Dude, like those freaking harmonies, Bach is so ahead of his time. Packerbell ain't got those harmonies. Dude, I don't think anyone's got those harmonies. <laughs> okay, so we lied when we said there was 10 recommendations because the last two pieces aren't actually that suitable for a wedding because they're orchestral pieces. But, oh my god, are they beautiful. So all of you should actually hire an orchestra for all your weddings from now on. Oh, imagine. <laughs> I only recently discovered this composer, but this piece is... Uh, you could probably arrange it, but even then it's like an 8 minute piece, but it's nice. Yes, and it's a piece you can also kind of fade away to, mm. it's not like yeah. interrupts. And the last one, okay, I mean, <laughs> this really isn't really wedding music, but it is the most romantic. If you think romance and beauty, <clears throat> this is the piece, yes. which is the third movement of Rachmaninoff's Symphony No. 2. That clarinet solo. Dude, the divorce rate, zero percent! Guys, it's wedding season yes. for all the single people out there. So right, if you keep practicing, you'll be invited to a wedding gig. And at the wedding gig, if you perform one of these pieces, one of the bridesmaids that are single will be like, damn, they are so talented and so such good taste in music. Yes. And you're gonna get cuffed. One of the guys or girls will <clears> notice you and then you're gonna... That's right, and play this music to save everyone's relationships. <laughs> Please share this video. Everyone needs to see it. If you guys have your own suggestions, I would love to read them. Comment. Yes, comment, comment below. What pieces you think are cool. And if you guys do end up using this in our wedding, 
Please send us and tag us. <gasps> I would love please to Please show you. us. All right, that's it for today. Please accent the like button and legato is the subscribe button. Bye-bye.